we are on task 4b and 4b is going to be reflective evaluation i'm going to quickly have the ai thing again read the instructions and give you some context and then i'll go over the mark scheme again set task brief the project is now complete and is in the process of being handed over to quick travel limited your company's policy insists that all employees reflect on the quality of their work at the end of every project your manager has asked you to review the quality of your work. Your manager has provided you with the system and user requirements to help you. Activity produce an evaluation of the solution you produced in task 4A. Your evaluation should justify how well the solution you produced meets. System requirements, user requirements, how the solution could be further developed. You have been provided with a copy of the system and user requirements in the set task information to help you with your evaluation. Your evaluation should be supported by specific examples from your work. Outcomes for submission save your report as a PDF file. Your file should be saved in your folder for submission use this naming convention task 4b underscore review underscore registration number hash underscore surname underscore first letter first name set task information the system requirements provided for task 4a were the existing code provided allows users to select a destination and compare the pricing of flights from different airlines to that destination for a specified period of time the solution must also identify trends and patterns over time for the most popular destinations commission earned from sales form different airlines the solution must be secure the user requirements for the solution were be easy to use display information in a meaningful way make use of appropriate textual numerical and graphical output in a way that would be relevant to the end user for this section we have two assessment focuses only and i do believe that this is good, probably going to be one of the easier sections simply because it's asking you to to look at what you've done to say how well you've done those things and what are things you want to do in the future so the assessment focuses are programming outcomes and future developments for programming outcomes the maximum marks for that is six and for future developments the maximum is three the first thing we need to look at is understanding how well the solution met the requirements of the set task brief i won't look at the other thing yet let's look at this first we need to understand how well our solution so that's the thing that we've done the program that we've come up with meets the requirements of the set task brief what are the requirements of the set task brief luckily enough it's going to be on the exam paper so you can you don't have to guess you don't have to go and look for it simply go to the section that says set task information and it tells you exactly what was required or what was needed in task 4 the existing code provided allows users to select a destination and compare the pricing of flights from different airlines to that destination for a specified period of time that's the first thing that's a requirement of this whole system the first thing i would do i would run my program and when it comes up with the choices to actually let users select a destination i would screenshot that stick it in my word document i won't say anything yet screenshot it stick it there i would get all my evidence first and go back and fill in the text so screenshot the destination choice and it says and compare the pricing of flights from different airlines if that's another thing that, that you've actually done go ahead screenshot that as well next the solution must also identify trends and patterns over time for the most popular destinations again if your program out puts this after you've selected this i would screenshot this output for the most popular destination screenshot that show that it's working put that in your word document and get ready to do some text for it the next thing is the solution must also identify trends and patterns over time for commission earned from sales from different airlines again once your program outputs this screenshot it stick it in your word document i'm not saying leave it there not say anything it's just that i would prefer to get all the evidence first and then because you know what you've done you know roughly how you've done it you you can always go back and check screenshot stuff put it in and speak about it later on and finally the solution must be secure how do you show that your solution is secure well the easiest way to do that is the stuff i mentioned earlier let me go back to my mark scheme quickly up here for security, you can show that you have no global variables or not too many. You can show that every variable that you have is only for that section of the code. You can show that you have functions. You, you can show that you're passing data between the functions. For example, function one might have a return value. Function two might have a return value or so on and so forth. So you're passing data from one function to another by using return values. You have good error messages. Your program does not crash when you put the wrong information in. For every use of a CSV file, you re-import the CSV file into a data frame. You don't keep using the original data frame these are things that you can screenshot from your code directly to show that you've done these things so that's what i would do Op open the code and if you have a new data frame for each thing screenshot that open the code and run it and if you have error messages or it doesn't crash when you enter certain types of data screenshot that functions and passing data you're probably going to have three four five six seven functions in your program screenshot each of those you don't have to talk about every single one of them but then i i would highlight the return value so if all of them have a return value of some kind highlight the return value and show 
show that um, the program is secure because you're only returning the necessary information. The next thing that we need to do is to understand how well the solution met the needs of the users. And just like before, you don't have to guess what the needs of the users are. If you go back to your exam paper, mine is obviously here on a computer, the needs of the users are going to be at the bottom here. So the user requirements for this solution were to be easy to use. How do you make something easy to use? You make it very obvious. You make it similar to something that people already know. So our program is mostly going to be a command line interface thing. So what I would suggest is give instructions but give detailed instructions very quickly. For example, if you're asking the person to enter their name, you simply say to them, please enter name. And in brackets, you might say this information should only be alphabet characters. There should be no numbers, no special symbols, no nothing, nothing like that. It should only be alphabet characters. If you're asking the person to enter age, you should specify, please only enter whole numbers, no decimal places. There should be no letters. There should only be integers, only whole numbers. Obviously, you don't have to put that much text, but find a way to shorten it so that the person reading it, once they can read English and understand the English that they're reading it should be relatively easy because the instructions are there so that makes it very easy to use that's what i would do for that one and again screenshot that run your program screenshot maybe two or three examples of your of your messages being short detailed enough and very easy to understand next we have display information in a meaningful way so the user can understand what's being seen on screen and quite simply label everything. If you are putting an output on screen that's supposed to be a discount of something, say this is what the discount should be, put the value there. Just put textual descriptions for everything. If you're outputting a chart, the chart should have a, a label for the x-axis, the chart should have a label for the y-axis, the chart should have a label for itself in general. Just label everything so that when the user reads this or looks at this information, again, once they can read English, this should be very, very obvious in the context of what they've been asked to do. But for example, if they've been also choose an airline and choose a price and choose all of this stuff once the final output is given it should be the airline with the most tickets were the airline with the most commission was and it should be very very detailed very easy to understand you don't have to do it in a long-winded way a single print statement is going to be fine for textual outputs labeling your x and y axis plus the label of the graph should be okay for the graphs so on and so forth in my opinion these two things are very close linked because here it says make use of appropriate textual numerical and graphical output in a way that would be relevant to the end user. This is saying, in my opinion, label everything. This one, this last one is saying, whatever you output should be relevant to what the user is looking for. So if the user is looking for a graph that shows how this links to that, show a graph. If the user is looking for some percentage output to be shown, it should be text. For the user, if the user is asking for the names of the people who got the highest commission this month, show names. That's all it's saying. So output the correct thing. And for this one, I'll and label everything and again screenshots 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 you're going to screenshot every single thing that you do every single thing that's outputted so that when it comes to writing about it it's quite easy what this is saying is show me that your solution meets the requirements and that's why i said maybe screenshots are the best way because if you're trying to show that something has been done and that thing that's been done is linked to a requirement simply show the screenshot and then explain it so for example if you're looking at something being easy to use you can say okay the system system is very easy to use in my opinion because every single section that the user has to enter input or read is very clearly laid out, is well spaced out, is very obvious what they need to do. I've put extra comments in a bracket so that they can understand what information is actually required. If the user enters something wrong, it tells it without crashing, the program tells the user, I needed a name and because I needed a name, I needed alphabet characters, not numbers. So please try again. That's what it's asking for. Another example could be um, the most popular destinations does your program output the most popular destinations yes it does here's an example of it being done here here's here's an example of it being done there it doesn't have to be very long-winded because once you can show yes my program does this thing the wording of it doesn't need to be long it could be a bullet point it could be a sentence or two that's it it's done and the final one which is probably going to be one of the easiest ones to show is the solution must be secure how do you show the examiner that you've met the requirements of your solution being secure you screenshotted the functions you screenshotted each time you imported the csv file into a data frame you screenshotted the return values so you show all of these different things and that builds up and finally we have future developments i'm going to jump straight to band three a convincing and well-supported rationale is provided for what 
future developments should be implemented. First and foremost, you've worked on this project. You should know things that you want to develop, even if it's stuff on the current requirements that you haven't done because it's future development for you. You can say, I didn't get this thing working, so I want to get these things working. That's fine. Even though you've said that you should also come up with things that might be beneficial for the system later on. And I don't know what that might be for this specific example. You might want to do something like an airline website where it's a graphical user interface where you click on, for example, American Airlines, British Airways, and then you click on commission. So having a graphical user interface might be a really good one. So you say what you want to do and then you say why you want to do it. So I'm seeing a graphical user interface because I believe most people using computers nowadays work with a graphical user interface and clicking on buttons and then click clicking on like submit or OK or done is going to be the way that most people know how to use a system. Whereas a command line interface that we have currently, people understand it. Yes, because the instructions are there and, and they're clear enough. However, a GUI would just make it much more simple and it would mean that a larger number of people would be able to use the system with a very little input from the person who developed it. So just remember that you need to look at the context of your exam paper of the program that you've worked on of the system that you've worked on and think hmm, how can I make this better what things can I do in the future to make this better to make it work better to make it look better whatever those are that's what you put here but don't just say I want to do x thing I want to do x thing and this is why I want to do it I want to do this thing and this is why I want to do it every single thing that you mention you say what do you want to do and then after that you say why you want to do that thing how is that going to benefit this system or this project later on.